Hey there everybody, welcome back for another acrylic pouring technique video. Today I'm showing you how to do a string pull or chain pull, depending on which one you like to use. They're essentially the same thing. So I've got my tropical colors and I am ready to make a floral bouquet for you or garden or something. It'll take some shape. I don't know if it'll be a unified bouquet or if it will be more of a scattered thing. We'll see. Anyway, here are my paints. All of my paints are mixed one part paint to either one and a half or two parts Floetrol. Um, I've got this dark purple, purple pansy. Um, then I have Thalo Red. They're all mixed kind of medium to medium thin. You want them to be able to flow well. Then I have yellow. Um, this turquoise greenish. And some darker phthalo green. And then I have white for my base coat, which I've got in a bottle here. I mixed up a bunch of my sort of base coat consistency white paint. Um, so that's one part paint, one and a half or two parts flow drawl, and then thinned with water until that's medium thin to thin. Okay, so we've got our setup. Let me move the colors and put down the base coat of white on the canvas. So I haven't measured out my base coat, um, but to cover an eight by eight inch canvas, which is what I've got, you would only need probably two to two and a half ounces if you're spreading it around with a palette knife rather than needing to tilt it to cover. Another good reason to tilt a base coat is it helps you see if there's lumps of, of paint underneath. Like here, naturally I don't have a toothpick or something to pick it up, but um, as the paint moves, you can see if there are lumps or specks which will dry lumpy or whether everything's flowing nicely. And your base layer does not have to be perfectly, perfectly smooth because the paint will kind of level itself a bit. But the smoother it is and the thinner the layer, the better it is to start out with. Okay, so for the string pull, chain pull, they work basically the same way. Um, so if you don't have some of these ball, ball chains, you can find them at any sort of craft store. I think I got some at Walmart. They're, you know, for necklace making. Um, you can use that or just regular string. This is just cheap yarn. So you can use either and I will show you both. They make basically the same effect, but I'll show you both just so that you can see which one you might prefer. Um, okay, so for string pulls, some people put the paint on the canvas and then lay a string or a chain around it and pull through the color. And then another way to do it is to mix your color on the side and dip the chain or the string into that and then lay it out. That's what I'm going to do today. So I will show you. I'm going to start, because I'm making flowers, I'm going to start with some pink and purple. So you just want a little, little puddle of pink and purple. And then I like to swirl it a bit with a toothpick just to get them together a bit. 
And then I'm also going to add just a tiny bit of white because I don't want it to be super dark. Okay, so I'll grab one of my chains and you lay it into the puddle. And then I'm not using the entire chain, I'm not getting it all painty. But you. I'm just using a toothpick to sort of dab it into the paint, get it all covered. Okay, so now we have a chain that's got paint on it, and I'm going to lay it out here. So you want to lay it out in kind of an S shape, back and forth. And then once that's laid out, you slowly pull straight. Okay. So as you can see, it pulls the base layer down and it sort of pulled it into the design, which I didn't love. I'll be covering that. That's one of the reasons why you don't want a really thick base layer of paint. Um, but let me put this chain back in that same paint and get it covered again and do another one over on this side. Okay, so that one I hardly pulled the chain down through, which left the petals more intact, but didn't give me as much of that stem that I would have liked. So I'm going to dip the chain into the purple color and just carefully add a bit of a stem here. There we go. So that one turned out much better. I think I'm going to add one more of these purple and pink flowers here, and then I'm going to add a couple other colors in front. So this one, it's getting sort of filled with white paint, so I wiped some of it off, and then I'm getting it back colored with the purple and pink. If your colors are getting too muddy, you can make a new little puddle of paint to dip into. This one I'm going to do a complete loop on the top, or pretty close anyway, just to show kind of the design that that makes. Okay, so start pulling just carefully. And then straight down through there. So do you see how it pulled all of that base coat and made a very thin stem and thin flowers? So the way you pull the chain really makes a difference in how your flower shows up. But we've got some beautiful petals here along the top. I'm going to set this pink chain aside. Actually, if you've got a cup of water that you can just drop the chain in, That'll help the paint not dry on the chain. Okay, so I'm just going to drop the chain into the water to let it sit until I'm finished with this painting. Now, of course, I'm making a mess of my surface here. Okay, so my next flowers are going to be, I think, green and yellow. Whoops. Okay. So I'm going to put down some green in a new puddle and some yellow here. And then swirl that together. Ta 
just to blend it a bit. So I'm going to do these ones in the same way that I did these, but I'm going to start them here kind of in the middle. So we have the prettiest flowers at the top, and then we cover up some of these more misshapen ones with, with this fresh layer of flowers. So stick your chain in there. Get it all covered. Okay. So I'm going to cross over a lot of this and bring it closer down here and then carefully pull. Okay, so I've put out three of these green and yellow, and I like them. I don't love them. What I do know is that if you have too much paint, that's what causes the problem. I haven't figured out how to put down the right base coat that doesn't have too much paint, but I have figured out that if you take a straw, you can suck up with the straw some of the areas of paint that you don't like. So like this big blob of purple, I don't love that. So I'm going to So now that I have sort of vacuumed up some of that extra paint, I feel better about adding a couple more flowers down here below. Got a little splatter there. Without having tons of extra paint that's gonna mess things up. Um, let me do, before I do that though, I'm gonna do just a couple extra green ones. Cause I do like how that looks kinda like stems, grasses. So I'm going to add a few more of those and then I'm going to add some pink and yellow flowers. And I'm bringing them all toward the middle because I do want it to look like a bouquet. Oh, that one turned out great. Okay, so already this looks so much better. We took away a lot of that muddy, sort of messed up pink and purple area. We removed some of the extra paint and we added in more of this beautiful green. So the last thing that I'm going to do now is, is add a couple of other styles of flower down in here. Um, just to show you one other way that you can make flowers with strings. So, cleaning off some surface so I can put down a fresh color, which I'll do over here. So this one will be pink and yellow to try to make kind of a orange blend. Okay, and for this one I'm going to use a string. So the string you have to push down a little bit harder to make sure that it soaks up the paint. Whoa, got my toothpick stuck in it. And I'm not putting a very large area of this string in the paint because this flower I'm doing petal by petal. 
So I'm going to put the first petal like this. And slowly pull it to the middle. Wipe off the paint because it'll have base coat in it. And then stick it back in the puddle of paint. Get it fresh. And then put on your next one. Okay, so I don't know if you can see from your perspective, but I'm getting some extra paint here, which I'm going to vacuum up so it doesn't cause problems. And then after you vacuum it up, just blow it out into a paper towel so you don't have a straw full of paint sitting there. Okay, something about this flower is not quite right. I'm going to keep adding petals until it looks right to me. Okay, so this flower here looks kind of sad. I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to fix it yet, but I'm going to start working on another one over here. And if I get this one better, then I'll come back and fix this one. So this one's going to be pink and white. Because I want it to be sort of a lighter color. And a touch of yellow also. Swirl it together. Okay, let me grab a fresh string and we'll try again with a different flower. Okay, so I'm laying out my petal, pushing down slightly so it contacts the canvas. And then pulling. Okay, that one turned out much better. Let's go for a second. This flower is behaving better. It might not look like it, but the petals are looking better to me as they come out. I'm going to add just a touch more white to this. Remove some of this extra paint. Okay, I like that flower. I'm going to try to add just another petal or two to this first flower and see if I can get it looking to where I like it. Okay, that's a little better actually. On this one I want to redo that bottom petal. It's not quite dark enough. Okay, I'm going to stop fiddling. I, 
I could fiddle endlessly with certain techniques and they wouldn't end up looking any better. I'm pretty happy with those two flowers. Can I get up that little drip that I knocked down? Okay, so I'm happy with those two pink flowers. Just to finish up, I'm gonna do a little bit more of this green and yellow mix and do just a couple more leaves down here at the bottom. And then I'm gonna be good. I don't know if you can tell from there, the chains definitely make a more kind of ribbed, scalloped effect. And the strings, it has a similar effect, but it's a little bit smoother. So they both make a really good effect. It just depends on which one you want. Oh, great. I love that. Okay. Let me dry my hands off and make sure that there's nothing I want to change, but I think I'm happy with that bouquet. Yep, I'm happy. It took a long time to make it. <laughs> Lots of effort, but we did it. Let me give you a close-up. Whew, that was a lot of effort, but I think it looks really pretty. So those leaves that I added, those made a wonderful kind of framing effect. And these pink flowers, I do like that five petaled flower look. It's a little tricky to get it right. And then I also love these tall, wispy, kind of calla lily looking flowers. So it's definitely a great technique. It's one that I could use a little bit more experience in. But anyway, thanks for joining me for this. And I hope that you have even better luck with your string and chain pool paintings. See you next time. Bye.